Boys and girls, boys and girls, boys and girls, boys and girls. Okay. We're just going to do four examples today, and uh, we're going to move. Uh, we're going to do seven and eight, actually, after we do nine and ten. Nine and ten are better examples for us to start with. And if you felt like you followed most of the checkpoint, you're going to be able to get today's lesson. Today's lesson is not that difficult, okay? So, and you guys, the nice thing is you guys all know where to start. As we look at problem number nine, what's the first thing we do to start? We subtract one. We get four tangent squared of x is equal to eight. Then what? Divide by four. Tangent squared of x is equal to two. Now, it used to be that we just said tangent of x was equal to, now equal to 2. Now we have tangent squared. How do you get rid of a squared? We square root. Yep, and we get tangent of x is equal to, shh, boys and girls, if I had, if I had this equation, x squared minus 25 is equal to 0, and you added the 25, you got x squared is 25, and you square root of both sides. I list my answer as what? Plus or minus 5, because there are two solutions. So yes, 5, but we have to list the positive and the negative. So same thing, because the tangent is squared, we have to count for the fact that it could be positive or it could be negative. So we have plus or minus the square root of 2. So that's the part that's new today, is that it's not just positive, it's not just negative, it's both. So what does this mean for us in terms of our, uh, you know, solving these equations within the four quadrants? Where is tangent positive? Where is tangent negative? So how many solutions will I have? I will have four. It's positive in two, it's negative in two, a total of four. I have four reference angles. So therefore, what I need to do is I need to inverse tangent of the root of two on your calculator. Do second tan the square root of 2. Let's come up with like 60 or 70 somewhere. Okay, 54, sorry. 54.74. Everybody, when you're placing these, you always put them between The x-axis and the terminal side. You never put them up here, never put them down here. And now we figure out all of the angles. Our variables x, x is equal to, what's this first angle? Right here. So the first one is going to be 54.74 past zero degrees. The next one is going to be 54.74 behind 180. So we have to do 180 minus 54.74. What do you get? 125.26. And then we do 180 plus 54.74, which is uh, 234. 0.74, and then we do 360 minus 54.74, and you get 305.26. So you can see that in this situation we have four solutions. Not too bad, huh? Just kind of one more step. What, can I erase? Okay, let's try number 10 together. What do I do first? So 3 secant squared of x is equal to 6. Then?
we get secant square root of x is equal to 2. Now, I don't have a secant button on my calculator. So I take the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of secant? Cosine. What's the reciprocal of 2? 1 half. Now I take the square root. And I get cosine of x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 half, or the square root of 0 0.5. Now, some of you may look at this and you're like, well, you would have the square root of 1, which is 1, and then the square root of 2, so you need to rationalize the denominator. Because this is not our final answer, we don't need to do that. We just need to come up with a decimal and inverse it. So, cosine is positive or negative. Where is cosine positive? Which quadrants? 1 and 4. Where is cosine negative? 2 and 3. So I have 4 spots total. 2 where it's positive, 2 where it's negative. So I will cosine inverse the square root of 1 half. Let's make sure that you can do that correctly on your calculator. Thank you. Thank you. Go, go, gadget calculator. Come on. So, cosine inverse of the square root of 1 divided by 2. And you should come up with 45 degrees. So here's what we have. 45, 45. Boys and girls, I know that you're chatty because you came back from break, but you don't know how to do this, and I do. So, so we got x is equal to, what's my first angle? 45. And then when you subtract 45 from 180, you get 135. When you add 45 onto 180, you get 225. And we subtract 45 off of 360, you get 315. Uh, no, but customarily you'll put it from least to greatest. So. Okay. Well, I went this direction. Why not? Okay, let's try another example, okay? Seven, how do I solve? What's my first step? And I get sine squared of x is equal to one. Square root. Sine of x is equal to plus or minus one. Now, here's what's interesting. If you come up with a number like 1 or 0, you don't necessarily really have to make a reference angle. Sine has special values at certain locations. Remember what the sine of 0 is. Well, first of all, do you remember where a sine is positive? So I will tell you that sine of 0 is 0. Sine of 90 is 1. Sine of 180 is 0. Sine of 270 is negative 1. So if you think back, folks, to when we made graphs, Remember when we did this? 
And when we made the sine graph, it went like that. 90 was up to 1. 270 was down to negative 1. Remember that? So these are your values that we kind of have to keep in mind to some degree. Okay. So the question is, where is sine of x equal to positive 1? 90 degrees, right there. Where is sine of x equal to negative 1? 270 degrees. So if you come up with special values like 0 or 1, you, you want to think about where it's equal to 0 and 1. Well, or sine or cosine. This one we'll do cosine. We'll come up with 0 and, and we'll see that. Uh, this one, I subtract 3 from both sides. Cosine squared of x is equal to 0. Square both sides. What's the square root of 0? Yeah, there's no plus or minus to 0, is there? Okay. So the question right now is, where is cosine positive and where is it negative? Where is cosine positive? And it's negative at those two spots. Okay. So, cosine of 0 is 1. If you remember the cosine graph that we made, it started up at 1, right? Cosine of 0 was 1. Cosine of 90 was 0. Cosine of 180 was negative 1. And cosine of 270 was 0. So you might want to reference these in your notes as you make these uh, shapes. Yes. Uh, so the question is just where is cosine equal to 0? So it's going to be two spots, 90 and 270. So most of the problems that you do are going to look like 9 and 10, but I gave you a couple, 7 and 8, where they turn out to be kind of a um, little bit different solutions where uh, you don't get four, you just get a couple. Okay. And that's all the notes we're doing for today, folks. Uh, short 12 minutes. Uh, your assignment is a worksheet. I'm going to.